Hi everyone and welcome back to the Retro Shack and if you're eager to get your hands on a ZX Spectrum Next then you'll know that the Kickstarter 2 campaign which resulted in the Spectrum Next issue 2 sold out months and months ago and with the current ongoing global chip shortages and a change in the architecture of the machine the delivery date for the Next has extended outwards and they're currently expected to reach people around the middle of next year, 2023, maybe sooner if supply begins to outpace demand at the big chip manufacturers. Given that demand for the Spectrum Next is still incredibly high, prices on popular auction sites have seen the Issue 1 machines going for, well frankly, silly money, if you can even find one that is. So what are your options if you don't want to be selling off the family jewels and don't want to wait over a year for the Next? Well, let's find out. Here at The Shack, we'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor for this video, PCBWay. They help us out with all of our PCB fabrication needs and make fantastic boards at amazingly competitive prices. And it's not only PCBs that are on the menu. Apart from other fabrication services like CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection moulding, PCBWay also have a great projects library of cool stuff to build from people all around the world. Oh, and if you don't like waving a soldering iron about, they can even assemble your PCBs for you. That's the PCB way. Right, on with the show. So the question is, I think I want a Spectrum next. What are my options? Well, I guess the answer in its simplest form is it depends. What does it depend on, I hear you cry? Well, I guess it depends on how much of a Spectrum next experience you want. If you just want a modern Spectrum built with 100% brand new parts so it's nice and reliable, then putting together one of Superfo's Harlequin 128K kits will give you pretty much a vanilla Spectrum experience in terms of actual performance and capability, but with some nice extras too depending on the revision you build, including selectable ROMs, variable timings, a joystick port, an 8-bit IDE floppy interface and other goodies, especially on the latest 4A revision with the only downside being that you may have to build it yourself. I built one of the 2D revisions and it's a lovely machine and very much recommended. You might be able to find them on eBay fully built too and by it delight sell both kits and fully assembled versions so check out their website too, there's a link in the description. If you go down this route you're going to be able to load and use pretty much any piece of software released for the original Spectrum hardware. and that's about it but you'll have built it and it's technically a new machine. Now if the features of the Spectrum Next that you really like are its ability to run at higher clock speeds and therefore make some of the more snail paced Spectrum games run that much smoother along with perhaps an enhanced audio feature or two and ULA Plus built in to give you some alternates to the default Spectrum colour palette then the Sisyph 512K is well worth a look, especially now that the firmware has been updated to provide an on-screen menu, removing the need to remember numerous combinations of key presses to enable or disable certain options. Again, with an SD card on board and DivMMC built in, along with a joystick port and other goodies, there's a lot to be said about the Sisyph, and you can clock the Z80 to 14 MHz, which is more than enough to get Driller playable. I did a full review on the Sisyph last year, and I can recommend it if you just want to be able to play Spectrum games designed for the old hardware, but faster, with more colours and more sound options. Like the Harlequin, finding these fully built is a rarity it seems, so you'll be building this yourself if you go down this route. It's a relatively straightforward build, but beware you will need programming kits for both standard EEPROMs and also for the onboard CPLD, which handles most of the logic for the board. Next on the road to uh, Nextville is a slightly different beast, and one that I can't really make my mind up whether I love or loathe. This offering, the ZX Plus Uno, unlike the Superfo and the Sisyph, 
doesn't have a Z80 at its heart, but instead, like the Spectrum Next, it's rocking an FPGA. In this case, a Zilink Spartan, which means it's able to run lots of different cores, including the Spectrum of course, as you'd expect from the case and keyboard layout, but also many other machines. It even has the TB Blue core, the same as the Spectrum Next, so this machine can and indeed does run a version of Next OS, but it's not been updated for a while and the machine only has 512k of memory, although there are 2MB variants of this architecture available so do your homework before parting with your cache. What you do get with the ZX Plus Uno is a very nice entry into the world of multiple core FPGA systems to mess around with and with it of course lots of fun with machines you may not have, so that's a massive bonus. It's not a Next equivalent but it's a great Spectrum and many other machines and you can dabble with Next OS if you don't want to do anything too challenging. Not cheap at €240 Euros, but as I say quite versatile. One thing to note is that while according to the manual you can use this without an external PS2 keyboard plugged in, you can't. Well, not without going absolutely bonkers and wanting to tear your own head off you can't. The manual itself is really nicely put together and incredibly in depth, so this is definitely worth a look if you want that FPGA experience and versatility. And all of that leads us to the main event, this the NGO, which you may already know is an open source and 100% compatible Spectrum Next alternative by Manu for High. It's a wonderful piece of work, the same FPGA chip, same memory, same everything apart from the official Spectrum Next keyboard and case. The board is designed to fit inside a standard 48k rubber key case or a Spectrum Plus case, although a bit of drilling and sawing will be required if you're using an original unit. I got this particular board from Active Consult, who built to order on an approximate 30 day lead time and I really can't fault the quality or the service, but you can also buy both the board and fully built systems from Manu for High himself of course, there are links to both websites in the description. This machine from Active Consult came with the latest Next firmware installed and everything worked straight out of the box, exactly the same as an official Spectrum Next. This cost around £275 for a complete unit housed in a brand new 48k Spectrum type case and with a new keyboard mat and membrane and a preloaded SD card and that's cheaper than the official Next by quite some margin. Plus it comes with a Wi-Fi module, real time clock battery, a Bluetooth module for loading tape games over Bluetooth, two Sega compatible game controllers and a power supply with a polarity protection switch. Now I think that's pretty good value considering it does everything an official Spectrum Next can do and you don't have to wait a year to get one. Oh and just like on the official Next you can also install a Pi Zero to get the fully accelerated Next experience, but on this unit we'd have to remove the Bluetooth loader module as the Pi occupies the same slot. I haven't bothered here as the only real current feature of the Pi Zero add-on is to allow for realistic loading of tape images just like a real cassette recorder, so ironically the accelerator add-on currently allows you to slow down your experience, but if you want to add the Pi you can. Now the ZX Spectrum Next case and keyboard are really nice to use, designed by the late great Rick Dickinson it really does look and feel like what a modern Spectrum would have evolved into, it's a masterwork, so does the NGO suffer from not being in that case? Well the answer in my opinion is a bit yes, but not enough to really worry me. Everything you want or need to do on the next can be achieved on the standard 48k rubber keyboard and if you pop the NGO into a Spectrum Plus case you'll get pretty much all of the keys that the next has, albeit in slightly different positions. The feel of the official Next keyboard is exceptionally nice, like a high-end laptop keyboard, whereas the Spectrum and Spectrum Plus are, well, what they've always been, simple and cheap to produce and of course that can diminish the Next experience a little. But if like me you grew up on the old rubber keyed wonder, then frankly muscle memory takes over anyway on all the old games, but I do wonder how this machine would fare when faced with a game designed for the next hardware 
and around the next keyboard. I'd like to get a hold of one of Manu for High's next compatible case and keyboard sets as they look incredible and it would be interesting to see how this also changes the feel of the Engo. Could be even better than the original Next. Watch this space. I should point out that Manu for High sells complete Engo units too for around the €270 Euro mark and that gets you the Engo in his custom case and keyboard, power cable and SD card. Everything else you'll need to get on your own. Anyway, let's take a look at the mainboard itself and see how it compares to the official next mainboard and then we'll take it for a spin. Well, comparing the Engo board to the next issue 2 board that it's based on reveals a striking similarity as you'd expect, but there are some notable differences. Firstly, the issue 2 boards had 1 megabyte of pre-soldered RAM and then two sockets for an additional 1 megabyte depending on the version you bought. The Engo comes with 2 megabytes soldered straight to the board. The Engo doesn't expose the pins of the Spartan in the same way that the Next does, but I'm fairly certain that on the Next that was a design feature to aid in debugging the board and not a feature intended for the end user. And other than some other minor placement changes, the boards have all of the same things in mostly the same places, as you'd expect for something that's supposed to be interchangeable with the real thing. Booting up the Engo presents you with a familiar Next experience, and with all of the buttons in the same place, you're going to feel right at home if you've ever used a Next before. Reviewing the functionality of this machine is a little pointless, as to every extent and purpose, it is a Next, just in a different colour and case. Literally everything works as if it were a real Next. If you really want an honest to goodness Spectrum Next, then you're going to have to wait a while or cough up some serious cash. If however you're prepared to get 95% of the experience for around the same price and perhaps a little less, then I can heartily recommend getting an Engo from either Active Consult, Manu for High or perhaps somewhere else I don't know about. It looks like the Spectrum Next bubble isn't going to burst anytime soon and as more and more machines make it onto the market, whether the real deal or clones such as this, then software and hardware aftermarkets will grow accordingly. The Next is an amazingly capable machine and its potential hasn't been fully realised yet and may not be for a good few years. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the episode. I'm off to crank this thing up to 28 megahertz and see whether hard driving becomes playable. Please leave your comments below, we always love to read them and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and then ping the bell to get notifications of when we post up something new. Hopefully get back on track a bit after this heatwave we've experienced in the UK. Check our website for details on how to support or donate to the channel. Stay safe everyone and until next time in the shack, it's goodbye from me.